Let me give you a quick history of this studio. First it was a closet and it had all of my and my wife's clothes in it. And then I was like, Amber, we should convert that into a studio. So I started doing that, painted the walls in here. Obviously when I took all the clothes from the closet out, the audio got really bad, but the walls looked better, so that was good. Then I was like, it's too small, can't really get enough done in there. Got my own studio slash office type thing that is outside of the house. Then Governor Wolf is expanding Pennsylvania's stay at home orders. The stay at home orders across the country happened and I was back home. So it was sort of, it had sort of been converted back to a closet and now it's somewhere in between studio and closet, but I've been making a lot of videos in here. But the sound was absolutely horrible. I called up my friend Oliver, who's fantastic at audio, recording, microphones, all the different stuff, and explained why this is happening with the shotgun mic on this camera setup that I'm using, and also how to fix it. Hint, it isn't the corners of this studio. Here's what we did. Here's the situation. And again, you'll have to excuse me for sweating profusely. Hey, all good. The other day, I recorded BTS and a brew in my office studio closet, and I'll give you a little tour in a second. It was like the reverb, whatever it was, it was just horrible. It was nonstop. I can hardly even listen to it. Like, it just sounds horrible. Let me show you a clip of what it sounded like. And that's just part of what you get when you come over here to www.youtube.com slash rcwninja. Ooh, yeah, we don't, uh, we don't like that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, yeah, I mm. kind of threw up a little bit in my mouth, like just kind of in the back of my throat part. <laughs> I hate those sounds. I really don't <laughs> like it. I really, really don't like it. <laughs> okay, first off, what are they called? What is that? So that is your shotgun mic having a really hard time dealing with the way that the sounds are reflecting back. Just the nature of shotgun mic. You have the Video Mic Pro Plus? Yep. Yeah, so with the interference tube, the reason those are long, you might already know this, but they have little slits in them. And the, the goal of a shotgun mic is to just have a tighter pickup pattern to pick up right, what's right in front of it. That's why they're so widely used in filmmaking. But those little slits, what happens is when sound comes from the side, it bounces together and cancels each other out. And so it really is effective at canceling out sound that's on the side of the shotgun microphone. But when there's a lot of little reflections in a small room with hard surfaces, for example, your closet, or even worse in like a bathroom where it's really hard surfaces and nothing is covered, there's not a lot of cloth in there or anything. The frequencies that bounce off of the wall tend to be the higher frequencies because they're shorter waves. And when those high frequencies come back without the low frequencies, it gets in those tubes and causes a very odd, almost like buzzy metallic distortion. And that's one of the reasons that uh, shotgun mics are widely not used for indoor professional recording unless it's a really, really well-treated room because they just have a hard time. So if you were literally using a different mic, it would sound echoey, but it wouldn't cause that distortion. Okay, okay. So, I mean, I have a bunch of other mics that I can mess around with. So that's tip number one is like get a mic that's designed for the space, right? Right, right. If you were using a different type of mic with like a coil in it, like a dynamic mic, there's instead of a condenser or something or not a shotgun, it could help, but let's tackle the issue of the room. What I've heard is that what really matters is like these edges. Is that right? Low frequencies are these big long waves and in small rooms they have real hard time you know, spreading their legs out. It's like me trying to sleep in a small bed. It just doesn't really work out. So when the low frequencies hit the corner, they kind of like build up and almost like exponentially get worse. In those corners, I don't know exactly if they will help or hurt the cause if you take care of the corners. I think that what you just need is just a lot more on the walls or clothing around you or just something. Like you just need more textures that will absorb the sound. So I just decided to use basically whatever I could. I have a fairly thick blanket that I draped up here on the side, screwed it into the ceiling on both sides. I only hit the stud on one of them, but it's a light enough blanket. I think it's probably not gonna fall down, maybe. Then I had all these foam Amazon sound panel things. They're not great, but they're something. Like Oliver said, like it's some soft texture. So I just threw them all on that wall. And then I had some other thicker foam that I got at Ollie's a couple of months ago. I have these two L brackets, so I can put at least one of them up like that, kind of pinch it up against the ceiling. They were 13 bucks for four by 22 by 36. Got a bunch of them. Some of them are in my office still.
You need to put your broom in the shed. Okay, here's the plan. I did confirm with Oliver that putting this on the ceiling or wall would help a bit in this tiny space. More the merrier in the tiny space. So, uh, I've been having a hard time mounting these. This happened overnight. Turns out that gaff tape, you know, isn't a long-term solution for sound paneling. Here's the plan. I got this wire in these washers. I'm gonna thread them through here. That looks, that looks better. I'm gonna thread them through the corners and then, like, mount it to the ceiling. Is that in focus? Who knows? No slamming doors, girls. Try the old actual needle solution here. Barely. Where's it at? <laughs> there it is. Boom. So those aren't in studs, but it's so light that I'm hoping that it shouldn't matter. We shall see. <laughs> you like it? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I mean. It's cool. For foam on your ceiling. Yeah. I still have, behind me, it's completely just the hard surface. All right, time to test it. All right, this is about the same setup as the BTS and a brew. A couple days went by, sent Oliver a side-by-side, -side, and he said, you know what? If you put a sound blanket or some sort of blanket on your desk, on top of your desk, that hard surface that's right next to the microphone, I bet that's gonna improve it. And that's just part of what you get when you come over here to www. And that's just part of what you get when you come over here to www. And that's just part of what you get when you come over here to www. And that's just part of what you get when you come over here to www. Is it better? Oliver, thank you so much for all the advice and for steering me in the right direction. It means a lot, dude. Everyone go check out Oliver, why don't you?